What's up everyone? Today is an exciting day for myself. I finally have got myself a NAS, a network attached storage device. This is going to help me consolidate all the things that I store in the various formats, whether they be uh, videos, whether they be my documents, some of my uh, code projects, etc. are all going to live on a single device, which is really exciting because at the moment I've got two different dock stations that are connected, one at my server and two right here at my workstation. Uh, this isn't super great because they're not network attached, right? So only this computer can access the files stored on the dock that is behind this laptop right here, while my server is actually uh, the only one that can access the dock that's at it. So what I want to do is make sure that I have a single device that has all of my stored data on it that can be backed up properly. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's really exciting. We're going to go ahead and get started. I have not one, not two, but six four terabyte drives. Uh, so that comes out to 24 terabytes of storage. We're going to put this in a RAID configuration. So we're going to lose four terabytes of that to RAID. Uh, but that still leaves a large storage pool of about 20 terabytes, which is plenty for my purposes. So let's go ahead and uh, get started on the installation. All right, so I went with the Synology 1621 Plus. Uh, this has six drive bays that we can populate here with uh, either full-size hard drives or you could get an adapter and insert those smaller uh, 2.5 inch drives as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just use full-size hard drives uh, because I wanted the space for one and number two, I wanted something that was cheap. Hard drives, pretty cheap nowadays compared to their uh, solid state counterparts. And so we're going to go ahead and snag one of these hard drives. Synology makes it incredibly simple to install these. Uh, basically, you just slide it right on in. Synology makes it really simple to install these. You go ahead and just pop out these little tabs from the side and then you slide your hard drive in all the way to the back press down. There's actually really no tools necessary here. And then we put these guys back on, pops them in place, lining the uh, drive up is probably a good idea. All right, there we go. So we've got one of our drives populated and it's as simple as putting it right in. We go ahead and make sure it's the right way facing up. Slide it all the way to the back. That's it, done, one. So now we need to do the remaining five. So although it should be really simple to install these, I'm finding that these little rubber gaskets in here do not line up with the um, screw holes super well. So I kind of have to massage them in a little bit, make sure that they're in there before I clamp this down. But uh, with a little bit of work, they go right in. I decided to go with the uh, Seagate Iron Wolf NAS uh, hard drive at the four terabyte uh, storage capacity. These are the Iron, Wolf, the Iron Wolf Pros as well, so they have a little bit of cache on the device, uh, kind of like an SSD, if you will, so that the most um, retrieved files are going to be much faster uh, when you go to look them up on the disk than it would be on a traditional hard drive. Piece of cake, all six drives are in. Uh, the only thing left to do at this point would be to lock it up so that these drives can't accidentally be opened while the device is in use. So we should be able to just stick this key in here. Hopefully orient it the right direction that is. Lock, and we'll just rinse repeat for each of these real quick. And now if I try to press to open, they're all good to go. So we're gonna take this downstairs to the server rack and see A, if it fits, uh, and B, we're gonna plug it in and get it going. All right, so here we are at the server rack. Uh, we need to make some space for it. One of the things I noticed lugging this thing down here to the basement is that it is heavy. With all these drives in here, I don't know how many pounds this weighs. 
probably 30 pounds, I would say maybe. Um, so we're gonna want to make sure that it can uh, fit in here and then make sure that it can hold the weight. So we're gonna shift a couple of things around really quick. All right, the moment of truth, does it fit? It does. Okay, so it fits. Uh, the real question is now, is this too much weight for this little shelf down here? I'm gonna double check the weight capacity of this thing real quick and uh, see if we actually are going to be able to support this. All right, I double checked the weight capacity of this shelf. It is 60 pounds, uh, so we should be okay. I think these Mac Minis are only a few pounds each. They're really light and that's the only other thing on here. Like I mentioned before, this is, this is probably about 30 pounds, maybe, uh, I'm not great at, at, at figuring this out on the fly, uh, but this should be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and connect uh, all the stuff to the back before we slide it on in. Uh, so when I plug this in, I'm going to attempt to set up uh, an aggregate link so that we can actually have dual one gigabit connections uh, going at the same time. That would allow for, let's say, two devices to write or read data from this simultaneously at the full one gigabit um, speed or bandwidth. So that's really going to open up a lot of options uh, for things like video editing while at the same time streaming a movie, potentially, uh, things of that nature. So I'm going to plug both in uh, in the off chance that we can get the software side of that working as well. Uh, we'll have to see a little bit later if we can actually make that work. All right, that's in there. This is pretty sturdy. It bends down a little bit at the back, but we should be all right because these things aren't going anywhere. In a perfect world, what I'd like to do is rack mount these up top here, um, but I do need to make sure that I find a rack mount uh, receptacle to receive these because at the moment I've looked a few times and I haven't found one that's uh, affordable. I could maybe 3D print something, but that's quite a bit of 3D printing and it may not be strong or sturdy enough. So that one's kind of still up in the air for now. These can sit sideways. They take up um, no space at all. Uh, there's nothing special about their configuration as far as where they sit. So as long as they're on and there, we should be okay. We're gonna go ahead and boot this up, plug it in and get started with the software portion of everything. All right, it's in, power is on, those fans are loud on boot up. Uh, so it's all plugged in. We're just basically gonna make sure that LAN one and two come online because those are the ones that are plugged into our switch, which at least on the uh, switch uh, router, they are uh, blinking at the moment, so they're receiving signals. So we're just gonna make sure that they come online here and then go set it up. Uh, I'm going to come back and clean up all of the cable management once this project is complete and I know that everything's working so that I don't have to redo it a second time if I need to come back down and tweak something. All right, so everything's come online here. Uh, power's on, status is blinking, all the drive bays lit up and LAN 1 and 2 are lit up so we actually look like we're good to go. Let's go set up the software. So all we need to do is go to find.synology.com going to search for our device and there we go we've got Synology NAS on my local network it's not installed I'm going to connect I'm going to blindly agree to these terms of service give up our firstborn child continue through the privacy notice and see what kind of options it gives us all right so we're going to set this up we're going to install a disk station manager we have the six drives in here. Uh, it says all the data is going to be removed. We want to proceed. That's okay because these are all blank drives anyway. And it's going to set up all the drives for us. All right, now we're actually into the software that lets us set up the disk station. Um, it's known as DSM or Disk Station Manager. We're going to go ahead and create our first admin user here. Um, going to blaze over some of this information because it's pretty boring and bland. But uh, the first user setup is the, the super admin. 
Um, then it's gonna ask us if we want auto updates. I turned mine off because I wanted to be in control of that, uh, but I would later go back and turn that back on for apps specifically. I do still have the Synology NAS itself manually updated. Um, now it's talking about updating the NAS or allowing you to access it from anywhere. Um, so we made sure to set that up. Then it asked us to set up our drives and this is kind of where we got screwed. Um, as you can see this warning here, it basically says that we need to fix our drives because not all of the drives are configured to allow, uh, or they're not all of the same compatibility. So it says here that drives two, four, and six is not in the list of Synology products that are compatible with this device. And this was super frustrating for me. As I went through this, um, I went and found that the model numbers of three of my six drives were just off. Uh, Amazon had sent me three drives. They're all the same drive, but the model number is just barely different. Um, and I think the biggest difference is, is one set of them was certified by Synology. The other set was not. And the only other difference is that um, one set allows for you to have like a, a specific scanning feature that the other didn't. So it would actually scan the health of your drive. Um, I went back and forth with Amazon. I ordered about 30 more drives in pairs of threes and sixes over the next few weeks after this project when I originally got them to try and get this thing to work. Um, Amazon would not send me drives of the same model number. I was on the phone with them, emailing, everything. It didn't work. So eventually what I decided to do was just to have six incompatible drives. Um, again, they are the exact same drives that do show up on their compatibility list without the added benefit of one of their scanning features. So long story short, eventually returned all the drives, got a refund, uh, kept six drives that were all the exact same model number because I would rather have consistency than I would uh, have half and half with this error message. Once we got that all set up, we wanted to allocate how much space was going to be given to our particular volume. Uh, Synology lets you set up various volumes. You can do this for anything. It's basically like a virtual drive, if you will. So you have your full capacity of the actual device, and then you have the smaller capacities set up and split up between the different volumes that you want to set up. So maybe that's a movie volume, maybe that's a music volume, maybe it's a, you know, documents. Whatever you want to set up, you can set up. Uh, then we set up our file system. We just chose the recommended default here. Um, it is created by Synology. It works really well for NAS applications like this. Uh, this is the quick preview of what we're going to do. Once we applied it, it said that we're going to erase everything. That's totally fine uh, because there's nothing on these drives. We want them set up fresh from the get-go, and that's what it's doing here. And we can see the drives are coming online and that it's starting to index uh, the drives and starting to recognize what is where. This took quite a bit of time, a day or two, just because of the size of the drives. Remember, 24 terabytes is quite a bit of space here. Um, and so after about a day or two, um, this really, really picked up. Um, the indexing uh, does slow down the device a bit, but I didn't move stuff around a ton in the first day or two. I kind of just let it finish uh, everything in the background, what it was doing, building the um, drives for us, etc. Once that was done, we went ahead and just double checked some information here. Here's some temperatures, the health statuses, things of that nature. And we can see all of them, the six drives are available. They do have um, the same information. Now we're just double checking some settings, things like bad sector warning, um, allowing us to get notified when a drive is unhealthy or is having issues, which is super sweet. Um, I'm really excited about those kinds of things because in the past I've definitely been burned by bad drives. And so being able to be notified when a drive is having issues is going to be a huge plus. And um, this is the user panel right here where we can set up all of our different users. We've got a super user, admin. Um, I think I went in here and eventually disabled it after I set everything up. Um, we've got my personal user and then there's a guest as well. Then we went in and we were double checking uh, to make sure that all of the different networking settings were set up. You can see here LAN 1 and 2 are lit up blue. Um, I would come back later and correct the um, aggregate link here so that we can get one gigabit per second, um, dual one gigabit per second connections to the device, which is awesome. The final thing that we needed to do was just set up some basic information for our shared folder so that we can actually access this from say your Mac or your Windows device, your phone, etc. 
Um, the drives are all set up. Now we need to set up the actual volume or the shared folder is what it's called. Um, and so I'm attaching it to volume one. We're gonna call it my cloud for now. I went back later and changed this when those new drives arrived and I added a bunch of extra shared folders. But for now I wanted just a single place to store all of my stuff. And so my cloud did just fine. We assigned permissions at the very end. Uh, you know, you can give permissions to various different user groups, which was pretty sweet. Um, lots of configuration options with Synology and eventually it was created. So the next thing to do would be to connect to it from my Mac device. You can see here that it is registered on my network, which is great. Um, so I'm just gonna punch in my username and password. Once we log in, we can see that my cloud does pop up, which is great. And then we wanted to go ahead and actually test this. So we grabbed a couple of files here and dropped them right onto the device. It copied over pretty quickly and I was pretty happy with that. Later, I would start to organize some of these files and copy paste some larger files to see how quickly this would happen. Um, it's, it does well for what it is. Um, you know, it's a large storage system, 20 terabytes of usable space, uh, just under that. And so some of these files are gonna take a long time. Um, I did go ahead and um, in the future upgrade the RAM and the uh, added a, an SSD cache to this which is not, uh, there's no recording of any of this in this video, but that greatly helped uh, improve the speed on these things. And once indexing was done as well, that um, greatly helped increase the speed of the device. So all in all, I was pretty happy with this. The biggest thing is that all of the data that I had spread out across half a dozen different hard drives, multiple different computers and devices now live in a single location, which is fantastic. Um, I am editing this video right now as we speak off of this NAS from my Mac. So it's hard lined in with an ethernet cable to my network and I can go ahead and just plug right in, open up iMovie, connect to it uh, through the internet, through my local network, which is awesome and edit things right off of the device itself. So very cool product. Uh, I'm super happy with how the migration went, having everything all under one roof, much speedier, much more clean setup for backing up all of my things. And then at the very end of all of this, I would back all of this NAS device up to the cloud to have an offsite backup, um, which is really great to be able to have it in multiple places just in case something happens. So if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe to me. We'll see you next time.